Back in the saddle. Here we are back in the uh, Kung Fu closet. I am always in the saddle, sir. I know. That's what we call the bus. Hop in the old saddle. Yeah, man. Good old Bessie down the road. Yep. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you, too. We got a big topic today. We do have a big topic. Might ruffle some feathers, but, you know, sometimes that's the We're fun probably going to ruffle our feathers more than anybody <laughs> else's. We might be the only ones that actually care about it. Absolutely. I think that's the beauty of the entire podcast, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, we're there, ruffling our there, own feathers. That's exactly right. There's an awful podcast that I absolutely love, and uh, the people at the end of uh, when they first introduce themselves, they're like, hey, if you don't like it, start your own podcast, because this one's ours. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Exactly. What is our podcast, Kung Fu Conversations? Kung Fu Conversations. Here yeah. we are. Yeah. So besides, uh, we're going to do our intro, and then we're going to get into our topic. So uh, our email is Kung Fu Conversations. Is it podcast or just Kung Fu Conversations at gmail.com? Yep, that's the one. Kung Fu Conversations at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram at KF Conversations. And you can write to me there, and I will try to get a hold of you. Our Facebook page is Kung Fu Conversations. Mm-hmm. You can find us on Facebook. We have a U- great YouTube page now. Yep. Um, YouTube's up and running. YouTube is up and running. Find us at Kung Fu Conversations. At Teespring, we are Kung Fu Conversations Podcast. You can pick up a cool coffee mug or an awesome T-shirt. Uh, those T-shirts are good. Those are sweet T-shirts. Yeah, sweet. And then at Buy Me a Coffee, you know, you guys buy us a coffee at uh, Kung Fu Con Pod. That's Kung Fu Con Pod. We're going to uh, keep updating the software and the equipment, and uh, we can always use your help. We've got great interviews along the way. We've got one in the can right now. We're going to finish up our second part with Neil Ripsky yeah. next week. That one's coming out. It's been a great feedback from that, that podcast. And uh, we've got our little schools going. I'm going to be teaching – in the Kitchen Coon next weekend, uh, Red Force Chinese Boxing. You can find me on most um, social media. I've got a Facebook page. I've got a Instagram page. And what are you teaching? I am teaching Wing Chun. Wing Chun. Yeah. Absolutely. Chop Saki. Chop Saki, baby. Been doing it for a long time. Absolutely. My got friend. a super legit lineage there, too. Um, and you can find me at uh, Boulder Internal Arts. Uh, I've been teaching over here in uh, Boulder, Colorado for, I don't know, 15 years. Yeah. Give or take. So uh, Bagua and Shingy primarily. And, uh, yeah, we have a good group. And so. it's great stuff. It's and good stuff. I'm a fan. I'm a student. Love it. Yep. So, so you have a new Shingy guy, and he's really good. Yeah, my new Shingy guy. Yeah, he is good. He's motivated. Uh, good guy, Scott. Uh, you know, so shout out to Scott. He'll probably listen to this. And uh, we can thank him for today's topic. Today's topic is what does – what would Shingy look like if it was external? What would Shingy look like if it was external? Do you have an wow. opinion on that, Owen, or do you want me to get this bag once? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, go for it. I've got a lot of things to say. They're all just uh, just jamming up in my head right now. Okay, here we go. I think most of the West that does Shingy is pretty much doing an external form of Shingy. I would agree. I truly believe that most Shingy that anybody trains or teaches – is added on to a high level Tai Chi class. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the five elements method. And it's usually just the five elements. And they, if they do Bagua also, it's usually just the eight palm changes. Mm -hmm. And those arts are supplementary to help flush out a different methodology based upon the Tai Chi. And a lot of it usually that I see is form. And chi based production, mm. chi based exercises. Sure. Yeah. And what happens is they will go down this path and they're like, oh, I'm doing an internal art, an internal art. I'm like, okay, you might be doing chi development. But, or not. Or not, right? But to actually get the right qualities, I, I mean, it, it just, it takes so much more than that. I really believe that that's where the power method, the power training comes in. Mm-hmm. And yes, I, I, I'm not talking about you guys being street fighters or anything like that. You don't have to use Shingy to, uh, right, I'm going to take this in the ring and do some MMA with my Shingy and stuff like that. But something that I was mentioning to you, uh, to talk about this podcast is when I watch a lot of Westerners do an application, bunny ears in the air. I've got, I've got my little two bunny ears in the air application of Shingy. They're doing it without the proper body dynamics and the body force and the body power. And so I'll watch them do an application and I'm like, man, 
there are so many other arts that do better applications. If you don't have the power method to do an application in Xing Yi, then you're not going to understand the tactics behind how that application should be applied. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. I think that's a super important point is, is, is the power generation and power expression methods. I, I suppose in almost any internal martial arts, but since we're talking about Xing Yi, I'll stick to that one. Definitely are going to dictate certain types of tactics. And I think it's a very, that's a very important uh, point uh, specifically because if you're Xingyi, you're, if you're not great creating Xingyi power in the body and you're not using Xingyi tactics, then what are you doing? Then, uh, and you know, and I'm just going to say this, but I see a lot of modern Wudang who are training, you know, they're doing Bagua and they're doing Taiji and they're doing, you know, they've got a thousand forms and they're beautiful and they made, you know, whatever. But then when they go to apply those things, they're doing based, Sanda. Yeah. They're doing Sanda and that's okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not bagging on them for doing Sanda, but let's just say that's what it is because all those guys train Sanda. It's like, yeah, Sanda's good. Yeah. Maybe your art's good too, but don't, don't do Taiji, don't do try to do, you know, Wuding Taiji, and then tell me that your application is Wuding Taiji because it looks just like Sanda. So I, th I think that, that that that's definitely a point uh, that we're trying that we're trying to get to with this topic around, you know, it being external or internal. You know, that was one of my big beefs. I had um, I'm like, I, I've, I've been really lucky to work with certain people and get you know, at least a base level understanding of what they're trying to do. And I've actually worked with a gentleman that has done a lot of Wudan stuff. And I've saw him demonstrate some Tai Chi, some Xingyi, and some Bagua, but it all had the same flavor. It all looked exactly the same. And it was definitely had some Wushu influence, which I'm fine with too. But the power methods weren't there. The power methods weren't clean. They weren't distinct. The Tai Chi moved like the Xingyi, moved like the Bagua. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're doing the same stuff, bro. Mm hmm they're doing the same stuff. And you know, honestly, if you do train all three of those arts, you should look like a different person doing all three of those arts. Yeah, I would agree. You know, it's the, the, cause they're different arts. Mm -hmm. They have different methods of power generation. They have different tactics. They have different intentions. They're used differently in application and in, you know, in, in sparring and in fighting. It's, you know, become, they, they are different. And I mean, if they were the same thing, I think, in a way, the Chinese are pretty practical. They would have just mashed it onto the same box and just yeah. said, "Oh, yeah, we just yeah, this is this is just one. This is the same thing. So screw it. We're just going to do this." Yeah, find find the easiest one of the shapes that trains it the best, mm -hmm. and then just like, all right, well, we're going to take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But this is what internal is for us. It's just one thing. Yeah, why have so many different distinct systems? Mm -hmm. I, I find a lot of people that come to me and ask me. I had an old friend of mine that. I kind of inspired him almost 20 years ago. He's like, you know, I've done a lot of Wing Chun, but I really liked what I was working with with you back in 2000, 2001, 2002. You really had a good handle on things. I'm like, well, hopefully I've grown since then, not just on the waistline, but also in, you know, how I teach and how I practice and what I'm doing. So, you know, it's been almost 20 years since we've worked together and he's hoping to do that again. He's like, I've also been thinking a lot about Shingy. I like it because it looks a lot like my karate. And I'm like, well, it better not. I'm like, who's Xing Yi are you looking at? He's like, he sent me a couple links, and yeah, it was pretty much, you know, an Americanized version of Xing Yi. And he's like, yeah, I like all their chi development methods and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, but they don't have any power, so they're not doing Xing Yi. He's like, what? I don't understand what you're talking about. And I'm like, you could go online, and this, this is a humble opinion that I have of my own. It's been hanging out with you for a few days, too, you know, mm -hmm. almost a decade, is – you could go online and find like 50 different applications that Shingy does. Applications, bunny, mm -hmm. bunny ears in the air again. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And you could reproduce all those applications and try to use them as a self defense method. And I'm like, okay, well, again, I, I really believe there are better methods. Um, if you're doing it on an external frame, if you're mm. just learning the applications, and think you're doing Shingy, that's not it. You've mm -hmm. got to have the power behind it. But even if you're just learning the applications, if you don't have the power, I think there are better methodologies out there 
to defend yourself and protect yourself with. Sure, I would agree. And now if you now if you put the the sauce behind it, if you got the years of training the power, then it's a whole different dynamic. But it, it's it, it's fascinating because I have a lot of friends that find it in karate. And what I actually gave him was I'm like I'm going to give you an external cue. That's one of the first things that I noticed was a major difference between karate and Shingi. It's like, okay. I'm like, and it's actually in the writings of Shingi. And that is the hand and the foot arriving at the same time. Mm. And he's like, oh, explain that to me. I'm like, well, go ahead. And uh, we were on the, we were on the uh, video chat and I'm like, go ahead and get into your, you know, karate punching stance. And so he gets into it. He's got his front foot out, you know, and he's, he's, uh, he's weighted into, you know, a stance and then he does a reverse punch. And I'm like, did your foot move? And he's like, no. I'm like, okay, let me show you peach one. And I'm like, watch my front foot and watch my hand. Mm-hmm. And so I did peach one. And he's like, oh, so you're moving, but you don't have any balance. I'm like, why? Why don't I have any balance? He's like, because you have to be rooted to have balance. I'm like, you do. I don't. He's like, I don't understand. I'm like, a, a int, uh, like an entry level understanding of stance and balance is static. And hell, mm-hmm. that's even sure. a training of ours right in Shingi. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to do sh- Santi for a long damn time. Long time. Right? But then, have you ever thought about maybe you can carry your balance and your stance and your posture and your shape and your power with you? And he's like, oh, I've never heard of that. I'm like, well, that yes. is internal Shingi. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I've never even heard of any system doing that. You know, it's it's fascinating too because I've got a lot of buddies that do a screamo. And I freaking love Eskrima. Mm-hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a practitioner of Eskrima, but I, anytime I've worked with anybody in it, it's just amazing stuff. But they become strong and they become fast in the patterns that they learn. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. Which makes sense, which mm-hmm. is a high level of learning. Um, they're not like bench pressing or doing anything like that. But I think that there is a ceiling to that level of strength and speed development. Mm-hmm. I th- I think that – and I'm not going to call it external. I, I don't like labeling things too much. But even if you do something like that, like maybe you learn, you know, like a four count or a five count or, you know, some of the sombratas or things like that. You learn specific patterns. You know, learn about 30 or 40 of them in a, in a good system. Mm-hmm. But maybe there's five or six that are you, that you really get get those patterns. And what you do is you plug or tie those in to be transition points for everything that you do. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get very strong and very balanced and very good footwork and very good speed inside of those patterns. But again, unless you have a way to look at that pattern to train it just as a speed function, just as a strength function, just as a balance function, and then you start doing different things like how you breathe into that pattern, different ways of breathing, different ways of opening up the joints in that pattern, different ways of you know, either integrating the whole body to move at the same time or even specific pieces of the body. Unless you have a clear clear path in front of you on how to do that, there is a certain ceiling that the body will reach. Mm -hmm. One thing that I find fascinating about your method, I'm just going to taste, I'm just going to touch. I'm just going to taste on it because Scott brought it up today. Um, Scott, our, 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 the new Shingi cat, he's done like Koryu Ryu arts for a long time. You know, the traditional Japanese arts of sword and staff and all, you know, the mindset training that they do is fascinating and amazing. He has done, I think he said some Muay Thai, some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he's done the sport arts. He's done seminars in practical self defense, which I think any martial artist absolutely should do that. Especially a classical trained martial artist. Just get a different perspective on all of it. And so, um, he's, he's had a couple private lessons with Tim Cartmel and worked with him and things like that. But one thing that he said, you know, to compliment you, he's like, I've gone for hours on a heavy bag in Muay Thai. And just come out of there sweating, take, take a shower, have some water. And I, you know, I feel great. He's like, but after doing a couple of hours with Owen's class, my nervous system is shot mm. or taxed, if you will, mm-hmm. you know? And he's like, and it's wild because I'll go home, take a shower, have some food, hang out with the kiddo, you know, he's like, but there's going to be a nap in there. And yeah. he's like, and it's fascinating because it's not my muscles that are shot. Mm-hmm. He's like, I still feel like I have, you know, if I had to go move some furniture for a couple hours, it's not a problem. But like the relationship and the nervous system and the breathing and how I'm focusing on the fascia and isolating one part and moving another part. He's like, I've never quite done that. Mm-hmm. And that is 
a level of Shingy that I don't think a lot of people have access to. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I, I think that, and it's very taxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no pun intended. Yeah. Yes, um, and you know we talk about that a fair amount on the show. Is, is this idea of the relationship between the mind and the nervous system? And, and, you know, everybody's just like, oh, yeah, the nervous system is like, well, well, until you start really like getting into like the internal martial arts and you start like really dialing down your practice in order to be able to train that and to understand like what you're trying to train and what level you're trying to train it at. I think that, you know, you can you can you can sort of sail through it if you have, you know, you have some experience and you have some talent. But when you really start to dial it down. And start to do the hard work, right? You eat some bitter, as they say. Uh, yeah, you know, Scott's experience is, is definitely the uh, – he told me that as well. And I was just like, well, it sounds like you're on the right track. Right, you know, right, absolutely. That's that's definitely uh, my understanding of the results that – or maybe the – there's not the really the results you're looking for. There's more like the externalities of the results you're looking for. But – you know that's that's what happens. It's a good the, it's a good marker on the path of training mm -hmm. a true internal art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, you know you're just your nervous your brain and your actual nerves in your nervous system and in your body get tired because of the level of concentration and the you, you're using it in a is in a different way. You're trying to access these areas of your body in a very specific way that. It just it makes you tired. <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. But you know something else that you do that I think is is awesome and fascinating, and I feel lucky to be in the class about is you can take that and like okay, here's how we're going to use it in an entry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's how we're going to use it uh, as a setup. Mm -hmm. Here's how we're going to use it in a transitionary drill. And like what I like about that too is you'll take something just as easy as a, a small piece of peach one. We're like, look, you're doing it over here. Look, you're doing it over here. Look, you're doing it over here. Look, you're doing, you know, put a weapon in your hand. Look, you're doing it here. Mm -hmm. You do it as an entry. Look, you're doing it here. You're doing it as an application. Look, you're doing it here. So it it really takes the shing part of things. And you're like, okay, here's the intention. Here's what you want your mindset and your body arrangement to be. Okay. Now we're, you know, you're doing the E and getting the shape right. Okay. Now here's how you can apply that mindset and that body structure everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, that's the, really the thing. It's like, okay, like once you get a sense of what it what it is and what you're trying to get to, it's I, my experience of it is it's really like the gift that keeps on giving. Like sure. You can you can like literally I can practice the same things in the same way and I can get a little bit more out of it almost every day. And it just th this idea of, oh, and you know, people are always like, well, you have to put the mind in the body. Well, yeah, no shit. But right? What is, <laughs> yeah, but what is the process of that? Exactly. And, and what piece of the mind is, are you putting in What there? are you focusing on? And sure. how are you focusing on it? And what's the result you're trying to achieve? And I mean, it's just, you know, it's, I, I find a lot of these like bullshit platitudes like, oh, well, you're just trying to feel your cheat. Yeah. You know what? That's not good enough. I, I found I, my experience of the Chinese martial arts is that the Chinese were very sort of practical. Sure, and, and they're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, there, there's a systematic methodology to training almost everything, and if if you're not hearing it from your teacher, if you're not hearing of the 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 systemization, the benchmarks you should be following, where you should be going to, what you're trying to achieve, why you're trying to achieve it, uh, uh, if you're not hearing really explicit like specific things instead of like, Oh, you just want more power. No, it's not good enough. Okay. What kind of power am I producing? Where is it coming from? Why, you know, where should my hand placement be? What does it look like when I do it? If I use peach one in an application on the outside of the body, as opposed to the inside of the body, what if I'm changing hands? What if I'm using it as a chin? -a? What if I'm using it as a throw? There's a thousand different pieces that need to be explained. It literally like explained. It's not, it's not just like, oh, just do it. Do it till you over. feel it. Yeah. Do it till you yeah. feel it. That's another do you thing. feel that? Do you feel that? <laughs> hey, there's a part of my mind that wants to feel a bubble bath right now because I had a long day of practicing. I lifted weights like an idiot. And then I went to shinging practice and I'm like, I should have picked one. I should have picked one. So I'm going to hop in the shower instead of the bubble bath. Uh, we're going to go watch that no David Harbour or Santa Claus movie with my roommate. But that being said, there's a part of my mind that wants a hot, sweaty – Nasty bubble bath, but 
is that what I'm using? Is that the part of my mind that I, maybe it's the part that I use in my shigging. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't suggest that for absolutely everybody. <laughs> but what part of the mind, what part of the intention, what part of the practice are you using? And you have that and you tell me in class, I'm not going to share it with everybody. You got to come to Owen's class and find out what that is. Mm. But you give me these benchmarks to work on. And what I find fascinating is then you'll sprinkle on one more small concept or idea and then I have to tie that idea back into every frickin' other benchmark that you've given me before because 100%. it all connects. Yep. It is all related. Yep. And so what I see a lot, at least in the West, and I, you know, I, maybe I'm going to call it my strip mall shingy, is a lot of it is being done as an external practice. Mm-hmm. And 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 is there chi in our shingy? Yeah, down the road. After you've opened up the joints enough, after you have the posture correct, after you have the power method correctly, then maybe we can walk and dabble into that area a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I think it's so much more rich if you're work, you know, you're working on the nervous system, the body, the whole thing. Cuz I mean, you and I talk a lot about this, you know, kind of on our own and we'll We'll, we'll lift the curtain a little bit for the audience. Nothing too big here. But I can't take my nervous system outside of my body. I'm like, okay, I'm going to train that. Okay. And then I can't take my cardiovascular system out of my body. I'm like, okay, I'm going to isolate and train this all over here. And then just like I can't do it with the respiratory system or, you know, the, the, uh, synovial system, you know, um, all these other things, but I can isolate it on a mental scale. And you're like, okay, I want you to train this. Okay, maybe maybe you're working on the five blows. It's like, okay, extend. Okay, but now that you've reached your extension, relax into it. Now try to try to bend this and that. And I'm like, oh my god! And so my brain's starting to tax. And that's another thing too is uh, it's been really hard for me with my weightlifting background. It's not the same mindset as as a Western mindset on like a bench press. You know, no. I'm not, I'm not going into it with like, okay, now you're going to try to move this part of your body. It's like, Ugh! okay, relax, breathe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Davis, relax, Davis, relax. I hear that quite a bit and I, I need it quite a bit, but it's not a forceful movement. It's something that you're trying to produce in the body when you, tr- when you truly open up the joints and, and relax the muscles to a point. You can't go completely limp or you're just a bowl of noodles on the ground, but you're finding that minimal musculature to hold up the skeleton, then you can start to make the magic really start to happen. 